Okay, Annabeth has posed quite a few questions today, so until I say otherwise, these are all from her. Uh, what would happen if America abandoned political parties? Well, I'd like to think that things would get better, because people would actually start listening to what the opposing person's idea was, instead of just being like, oh, you're a Republican, oh, you're a Democrat, I can't listen to what you say, just because you said it. But I'm pretty sure that wouldn't happen. Our political leaders, being political leaders, would find something to discriminate with. <laughs> Nathan's showing the kitty cat out the window. Let's see, can you see that? I don't know. Hang on. No, you really can't. But there's Remy and Nathan. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, politics. Yeah, I think it would still be ridiculous. All the political leaders, like in Congress or whatever, would still find something to discriminate. They'd be like, oh, your grandmother, I knew her. I'm not gonna vote for your proposal. I, I, man, it's been so long since Bali's. I don't know words anymore. Um, yeah, so it would probably not get any better. Next, she asked, um, if a single living cell were found on a distant planet, scientists would exclaim that we have found life elsewhere in the universe. So why is a single living cell found in the womb of a pregnant woman not considered life? Discuss your thoughts on this idea. Okay. So, abortion is one of the few political issues to which I actually care especially about and have a strong opinion on. I mean, I am pretty strongly pro-life. There are very few situations in which I can't see, in which I can see the merits of, like, having the option of abortion. So, I, I have no idea why people don't see this, Annabeth. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, um, sort of related. Jill showed me this, um, this article where someone is actually arguing for after birth abortion. Like, if you find out after the baby is born that it's gonna have disabilities or something, there's no difference between you know, a baby in the womb and a baby being born. So let's just kill that baby too. And uh, especially, something I especially don't understand is like why you would want to kill a baby just because it's, you find out it has a disability, like it's gonna have some sort of handicap or it's gonna have Down syndrome or something like that. That is, <sighs> there are no words to describe my incredulity at the human race sometimes. Like, I thought we had gotten past this with Sparta. Back then, you know, it was completely acceptable and even required to take your handicapped babies and leave them on the hillside to die. And I thought that since ancient Spartan times, we as a society, as a human race, could have grown to a little bit morally just to realize that it's a baby, an innocent baby, and there is absolutely no reason that could justify killing it. And we're gonna go on to the next question. Um. What do you think America slash the world slash your life would be like in 50 years? Um, I don't know, I'm not really good at kind of extrapolating out and figuring out how things are going to be different. I feel like, you know, things aren't going to change and it's just going to be exactly the same except that we're all going to be old. But, like even in our lifetimes, tons of stuff has changed. Like, you know, when we were born, like, not one house in a hundred had a computer in it, and nowadays, you're considered, like, a social pariah if your computer is more than a year old or something. It's, like, kind of a requirement to have the computer and the internet, and, like, so many technological changes have happened from, you know, 1992 to 2012, 2012. And, like, if you look at any 50-year period, especially, like, recent history, you know, 1950 to 2000, 1900 to 1950, there have been a lot of serious changes, like, politically, socially, technologically, and all sorts of stuff. And so I'm sure the world is going to be significantly different in 2062. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll have flying cars like the Jetsons. Oh, another thing, probably no one is going to know what the Jetsons are anymore. And we're going to be those old people talking about how much better things were back in our day. Of course, we're kind of already doing that. It's like 90s cartoons versus current cartoons. We're like, oh, you kids growing up now, look what you have to do with. But, um, so I guess things will probably be significantly different. I just don't know exactly how, except that we're going to be 
the next generation of old people talking about how much better things were when we were kids back in our day. That's gonna be us guys, you know, assuming we live that long. Um, next question. Would you rather have a flying car or a 3D printer? Okay, seriously, definitely a flying car. I mean, how cool would that be? Of course, um, flying just kind of fascinates me in general. I've never been on a plane, I think is actually kind of terrifying, but I just wish, I like the idea of being able to fly. Uh, it's probably, it's one of my favorite potential superpowers, except for maybe telekinesis, because I'm really lazy, like the most of us. Um, so definitely flying car. I mean, 3D printers and coal and all, it's just, what's the point when I could just go to the store and get whatever I would have printed out? This one's a kind of gross question. Would you rather eat haggis or not brush your teeth for three days? Ugh. Well, I definitely can't not brush my teeth for three days. I mean, just like going the day without having brushed my teeth makes me feel so disgusting and dirty. And, oh, oh sorry. Uh, I forgot to include a giant bowl of haggis. So, that would be miserable. I guess I would be stuck eating haggis. I mean, I've never tried it before though, so maybe it would end up being all right. Is it good, Annabeth? Have you tried it? <sighs> um, next question. How much does gas cost in Bowling Green? It costs a lot, Annabeth. <laughs> Has the van One Direction caught on in America yet? I think it's safe to say yes. My sister has been kind of obsessed with them for months now. In fact, um, just a couple nights ago, they were on an episode of iCarly. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's a new, it's a Nickelodeon show, and it's kind of funny sometimes. And um, the whole band was featured on an episode, so that was interesting. And um, well, she's been singing all of their songs kind of nonstop. But I really like the one song, "What Makes You Beautiful." I think that song is adorable. And any time I listen to it, I get it stuck in my head forever. Next question: What's your favorite Hank Green song? Um, well, I'm kind of hit or miss on Hank Green songs. I like some of them, and others of them I don't care so much for. But the ones that I do like, I like a lot, and uh, I'm not sure I can pick a very favorite. So, um, I sort of compiled, compiled a top seven. Um, they're not really in the order I like them, they're just in the order I found them. Because I just look, looked through and found the ones that I liked. Um, the first one that came up was Willie's song. Um, it's like... John has a dog named Willie, and like whenever he hears a song, a sound he hasn't heard before, he like tips his head, and it's a it's adorable way. And John was worried that you know there were no more sounds for Willie to hear, and so he had like all the nerd fighters co get together and make these sounds, and just and Hank compiled them into song, and it's a really cool song. You guys should check it out. Um, the next one is the man who throws the Tetris feast. It's just kind of a ridiculous and funny song. A uh, song about an angler f anglerfish, I quoted that last week, and it's just, I think it's hilarious. It's, I don't know, I like that kind of humor, and it's fun. I had it in the, um, the, the little down bar -y thing, the, the description last week. I don't know if any of you guys looked at it on YouTube, though. Just know that there's several song links there, and I'm going to put um, links and stuff in it this week probably so if you want to look at those you can um number four is i know it's a song in 10 words which i thought was really cool like he literally uses 10 words throughout the whole song i mean it's not a really long song it's like a minute and a half or something but it's just so cool and then he's got the words on the screen and it's kind of showing you which of the 10 words is showing up and i like it it's pretty cool um Number five is DFTBA. It's like a rap song, and you know, DFTBA stands for Don't Forget to Be Awesome. But um, we had uh, Nerd Fighters again come up with all these different acronyms for DFTBA, like um, uh, Dandelions Flying Through Blue Air and stuff like that. There were funnier ones. Oh, um, Tooling for the Best Acronym. That one was funny. And he just like made a whole song out of all these different uh, acronyms for DFTBA. And it was really cool. Like, I don't really like rap, but that song is probably, it's, it's epic. <laughs> um, you guys should look that one up. And uh, the next song is just really funny. It's, uh, the video is called Squirrel Attack. I don't know what the actual song is, but it's like the song about Scuzzy Kazoozle. <laughs> Scuzzy Kazoozle Carl, the um, homicidal squirrel. And she goes around the island killing people and stuff. And the last one... Um, Hank is, Hank's written several songs about Hogwarts, 
and Harry Potter and that whole world and stuff. So I just picked one of those. Um, I think it's the most recent one. It's called This Isn't Hogwarts. It's kind of complaining about public schooling in America and how screwed up it is and how Hogwarts is so much cooler, which it definitely is. And uh, so that concludes my list of favorite Hank Green songs. Sorry, I didn't really answer the question. Um, well, I guess my very favorite... Um, hmm, probably a tie between a song about an anglerfish and DFTBA. Those are like my two top favorites of his. Okay, um, next question is from, let's see if you guys can guess. Take everything you know about me and the Pope and discuss whether or not he likes me. Does he like me? Yeah, um, so that one was Shelby. Um, well, in case you didn't know, Shelby, I don't really know that much about you and the Pope. I know that, uh, I think you watched an episode of Sherlock with him and maybe some Doctor Who, So that's definitely promising. I mean, any guy you can watch Sherlock and Doctor Who with, he's, he's a keeper. Um, other than that, though, I know he's, I think he's a good guy. I mean, he goes to Asbury. All Asburyans are good guys, right? Um, and so, probably, um, he is definitely in love with you. Just, you know, be patient. He's trying to find the exact perfect way to propose his love, and then you will be together forever and living in Haiti and being awesome in missionaries and stuff. And I don't know what I'm saying. I honestly have no idea, but um, stuff will work out. God knows. I don't know, but God knows, and he will let you know in the right time. Okay, next question. Oh, that's the last one. Oh, wait. Um, Jill proposed this yesterday. Um, she and Amy were freaking out right before an anatomy test, so she was like, is it possible to know too much about the human body? And yes, the answer is definitely yes. Like, they were studying six pages worth of stuff about muscles, and like, they were supposed to memorize the whole thing and do a test. And I consider that to be too much about the human body. And there's also, like, not necessarily, you know, the muscles and the bones and stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool to learn about, but, like, what happens to the human body when it's decomposing and stuff? Like, that bones episode, Jill will know what I'm talking about, I think, where they visit the body farm and they're doing all these tests on dead bodies, like, how long will it take this one to explode, or what's gonna happen if you leave it lying out in the sun, and it's just disgusting stuff that I would never want to know. And so that is definitely a too much scenario. <sighs> I kind of missed getting too much questions, and so Jill and Amy and I were talking about it yesterday, and she proposed that one. And so, um, that's all the questions we have for today, and that means it's time to announce my favorite question. And um, Annabeth pointed out that she's won three times now. And it's just probably because she's, she's kind of the one who proposes the most questions and so like there's bound to be good ones in all the questions she proposes and stuff and other people sometimes give questions and sometimes don't which makes me sad when I don't get questions but um just because I haven't ha gotten one in a while uh, I think Jill is my favorite this week because she gave me a too much question she kind of has an advantage because she talked to me in person but anyway Jill wins yay so bye guys I'll see you next week Happy, happy week and stuff. I'm not good at ending these things. Bye! I feel kind of bad mentioning Pookie and not Reamy, the star of the house. So here he is, if I can get him in the camera view. Say hi, Reamy. Hi!